Well, female genital mutilation, a barbaric practice that invokes horror in many of us around the world, but sadly a practice that remains common in other regions. Well, this year alone, the United Nations estimates that 4 million girls are at risk of FGM, mainly in the Middle East and parts of Africa, with the Pope now speaking out on the issue condemning female genital mutilation and sex trafficking, calling on leaders to act decisively to stop both the exploitation as well as humiliating practices that afflict above all women and girls. Amen. All right, joining us now live from Moscow is journalist Medina Koshinovara. Medina, thank you for your time this evening. First of all, tell us more about this illegal practice. How widespread is it? Uh, well, uh, as uh, you just mentioned, female genital mutilation, or as it's uh, quite often referred to uh, in short, FGM involves partial or full removal of the external female genitalia for uh, non-medical reasons. Uh, there are actually uh, four uh, major uh, types of this procedure and all of them are harmful, uh, they're cruel, as well as uh, very dangerous. Now they only uh, differ in how much of external female genitalia is uh, being removed during the procedure. Now international rights groups have uh, for years decried it as a barbaric uh, procedure that that can lead to uh, really uh, numerous complications, both uh, physical and psychological, as well as sexual. And in most tragic cases, it can also, this procedure can also lead to death due to uncontrolled bleeding and infection, as it is quite often being uh, performed in uh, secret, in uh, non-sanitary conditions, and not in a medical uh, facility. Now, if we talk about the um, age of the minors, and now FGM is uh, most often carried out on young girls uh, between the uh, age of uh, infancy to up to 15 years old. And also, if we talk about the uh, reasons uh, behind uh, this uh, procedure, then it is really very uh, difficult to speak about the reasons as they do vary from community to community. Now, in some cases, it is seen as um, some sort of uh, rite of passage into womanhood, uh, while others see it as a way to suppress a woman's sexuality. Now, many communities practice uh, genital mutilation in the belief that it will actually ensure a girl's future marriage or even uh, bring family honor. Now, there are mm -hmm. also communities uh, that associate it with religious beliefs, but overall, in any cases, behind any reasons, it is internationally recognized as a grave violation of human yes. rights, and unfortunately, it is uh, still very widespread across the globe. Yeah, and you know, when you say about it being widespread there, uh, Medina, you, you really think of Africa, uh, some parts of the Middle East, but this also happens, doesn't it, in Russia's Caucasus? Uh, it's true, uh, and it's true about Africa as well. Now, more than 80% of all women that underwent FGM during their life, they're indeed from Africa, especially from the uh, northeastern regions of the continent. But it is true that this practice does exist in some regions of Russia, especially in the Russia's North Caucasus, which is situated in the south of the country. Uh, here, I'm talking uh, primarily about uh, the... Um, conservative majority Muslim parts of Russia's North Caucasus. I'm talking about the Republic of Dagestan, where uh, there um, a lot of cases can be met of FGM, especially in some remote parts in remote villages in the mountainous areas. And well, there are a lot of villages there in uh, that particular region, as well as some rare cases can be found uh, in uh, a neighboring regions, a uh, neighboring to the Republic of Dagestan, here I'm talking about Ingushetia as well as Chechnya, there also does exist this illegal and really life-threatening procedure where dozens of girls, they undergo this procedure. Uh, but again, it is happening not in the big cities, but rather in remote villages uh, where community is very conservative. 
Yeah, all right. Well, I think we can all agree that it's absolutely barbaric, disgusting and shocking and that it needs to 100% end. Uh, Medina, thank you so very much for coming on to speak to us on this important issue this evening.